Hey everybody, welcome to Steve Hayes Classic Movie Reviews. Look below for some great movie merchandise, and also look below for some great gifts for the film fan in your life. Before we go see Steve, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, that like button, and fill in that little bell if you want to know every time we pull out a new film. Let's go enjoy it. Johnny, come on in. Johnny, we hadn't done a musical in a long time, so I figured this is the time of year to do one. And what better one to do than Judy Garland and Van Johnson in Robert C. Leonard's In the Good Old Summertime. This one is a remake of an Ernst Lubitsch movie called The Shop Around the Corner, which had been made in the early 40s with Jimmy Stewart and Margaret Sullivan. Basically, the plot is that Van and Judy, it's the turn of the century, and they work in a music store that's run by S.Z. Sakal. You'll remember S.Z. Sakal because in Christmas in Connecticut, he's the chef that teaches Barbara Stanwyck how to cook. Oink! Wookie dinky bikey dookie! Flopsy. You know, he's really funny. Oh, Liska, Liska, you give me goose pimples. Judy and Van have this rivalry at this music store. And they're always on each other's nerves and they're always fighting. Honestly, you're the most insufferable man I've ever met. Oh, Heaven I knows been? you were bad enough when you were just a salesman, but now that you're... Manager. Now, unbeknownst to each other, they're also writing love letters to someone through like a, a pen pal service. And they don't know that they've been writing love letters to each other. And that's basically the plot. So the suspense in the thing is what's going to happen when they find out that their worst enemy is really the person who's their right lover. I'll tell your friend about it if I ever meet him. very much. This movie was produced by Joe Pasternak. The Pasternak division of MGM were known to have pleasant sets. Uh, the Freed unit was not. The Freed unit was very hard on Judy and with all of her lateness and, and problems that she had getting to the set. Pasternak had a meeting with every single member of the cast and crew before In the Good Old Summertime was made and said, we are working with her with kit gloves. I want smiles on the face of everybody. I don't care what time she comes in. I don't care what she does. We love her. Mm -hmm. And it really showed. This was one of the later movies that she completed that went without a hitch. You know, yes, she had trouble arriving on the set on time and stuff, but she had a really good time. She felt needed. She felt loved. Van Johnson just adored her. And their chemistry together was so great. I just idolize when they look at me, my heart Van Johnson had an interesting career. You know, he started out, he was working his way up, and the Bobby Soxers loved him during World War II. He had, had a, played a really sensitive soldier in human comedy. She loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. She loves me not. And then he made a movie called A Guy Named Joe. Now, when he made A Guy Named Joe, this was like 1943-44, with Irene Dunn and Spencer Tracy, he was in a terrible automobile accident, and he was scalped. It took the top of his head from here right off. And they put him in the hospital and Louis Mayer said, well, we got to start all over again and refilm this. This is never going to work. And Spencer Tracy and Irene Dunn went to Mayer and said, if you take him off this picture, we will never make another picture here. So they took six weeks and they let him heal. And he came back to the movie and he was the romantic lead in that movie and it made him a star. Try to do my best. Mm -hmm. And he had a really good career as a leading man right up until pretty near the late 50s. That attractive young man, he's just the type women fall for. <laughs> I certainly got a sense of humor. <laughs> he was affable, he was freckle-faced, he was gay. <laughs> <laughs> and he had this whole double life. He and Keenan Wynn, Keenan Wynn was married to this woman named Evie and Keenan Wynn divorced his wife so that Van Johnson could marry her because they got along so they could set up that kind of a, of a situation. They also had a kid, but that was an arranged marriage so that the emphasis would be off Van Johnson. Van was a, a, was a funny, funny, funny guy. I remember I, I saw Van at a birthday party one night. He arrived and Lauren Bacall was there and he went over and he picked a dahlia out of the thing and he said, Betty, how the hell are you? And he stuck it down her cleavage. <laughs> a wet down here down her cleavage. And she went, oh, man. You know, he was full of the dickens. He was a really, he was a really great guy.
And his scenes with Judy have a sexuality that you didn't that didn't come into her movies very often. Um, at one point, he shoots the moves on her, and it's really it's a wonderfully touching, sexy moment. He moves in on her. And oh, well, I just I think this is ridiculous, oh, no. outrageous. I. He really brings out a sexual aspect in her that that a womanliness that wasn't that wasn't part of her before, which I really really liked. Suppose I should be thanking you. Oh no, you don't have to do that. The songs in this movie were not composed for this movie; they were original songs from the period. Uh, and she does a number called "I Don't Care," which is one of my favorite 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 Judy Garland numbers. I And she dances and runs around and dances, and it's so adorable. She's got this, she's just, you can tell she's just feeling her oats. I don't care, I don't care. When it comes to happiness, I want my share. This was the one just before they put her into Annie Get Your Gun, which was a tragedy and she got fired off from. This movie has great supporting actors. It had uh, Spring Byington. Spring Byington was this fluffy little character actress who always plays sort of <sighs> wise best friends or little flibberty gibbets. And she plays uh, Sakal's girlfriend. And she keeps leading him on, you know. I feel very well, thank you. I have another engagement. Well, you can get out of it. Explain it to her and she will understand. And what makes you so sure it's a woman? And then she'll take him back, and then they get together, and then they don't, and it's very, very sweet, and it sort of mirrors what Judy and Van are going through. Oh, listen to me. Listen to me. There isn't anybody else. No? Really. This movie also stars Buster Keaton. Now, Buster Keaton, legendary genius of silent film comedy. Amazing. That face, you know. They hired Buster Keaton, by this time MGM hired him as a gag writer. And they had to have Judy and Van Johnson meet cute. And so they do this bit that Buster choreographed and taught Van Johnson and Judy how to do, where he breaks her hat. She has this flamboyant turn of the century hat and he bumps into her, her hat falls off, he picks it up, she falls into it, it blows it. It's just hysterically funny and it just keeps destroying the hat. I'll fix your hat for you. No, that's not quite the right My angle. Hand oh, uh, here's your umbrella. I don't really know what happened. Well, oh, here's your bag, madam. Ah! S.E. Sakal's greatest thing is his Stradivarius, and he always has to play his violin at every function, and he plays terribly. Nobody ever wants to hear me go, I thought I'd play my Stradivarius, and they all go, oh no, you know. Well, his nephew is Buster Keaton, who he torments at the office constantly. Buster Keaton goes to hand him the violin and does this pratfall where he, he I don't know how he does it. He does like a turn, a flip, a thing, and falls on this violin. And it's one of the most beautifully brilliant pieces of physical comedy you'll ever see. And because he did this, they wrote his character into the movie just so he could do this bit. And he got his first acting thing in MGM since he had been fired from MGM in 1933. So it was a nice reunion. They give Buster Keaton a lovely, lovely, lovely little character to play. This movie is, it's not as, as engaging as uh, Meet Me in St. Louis, but it has the same period feel, it, it, and it's got <sighs> Judy Garland in love. And you know, <sighs> when she was in these MGM musicals, they really, they went all out. The costumes are gorgeous, the color is sumptuous, the production numbers are great, and she is having a wonderful time. And it shows. And you are going to have such a wonderful time with Judy Garland, Van Johnson, S.C. Sakal, Spring Byington, and the genius Buster Keaton and Robert Z. Leonard's production of In the Good Old Summertime. Let's all go to the lobby. Can you do that again without any faces? Pre noon, toxic environment. Good morning. 
the popcorn can't be beat.